गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल आई एम सो हैप्पी टू सी यू ऑल हेयर सो टुडे आई एम गोन टू टॉक अबाउट अ हाईली रिक्वेस्टेड टॉपिक दैट इज वेटेड जीन को एक्सप्रेशन नेटवर्क एनालिसिस ऑल्सो नोन एज वेटेड को रिलेशन नेटवर्क एनालिसिस इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द आइडिया बिहाइंड दिस एनालिसिस वेरियस स्टेप्स दर आर इन्वॉल्व वेन परफॉर्मिंग दिस एनालिसिस वेन डज इट मेक सेंस टू यूज दिस अप्रोच एंड वी लास्टली वील गो ओवर सम गुड प्रैक्टिस वेल परफॉर्मिंग दिस एनालिसिस Uh, this video is not a demonstration video, but it is more towards a conceptual side where we will be focusing on understanding the idea and working behind this approach. So I'll be making another video where I will be demonstrating how to perform this analysis, which will be uh, coming up in the following weeks. Uh, but in this video, we'll mainly be, mainly be talking about the idea behind this approach. Let us say there is an experimental drug which is being tested for a certain type of cancer. and it has been found that cells from tumors extracted from patients having that particular type of cancer do not respond to the drug therapy which means the drug do not effectively kill the cancer cells and because the cancer cells are not eradicated the tumor comes back so essentially what we're interested is to observe the systemic level changes the changes that are happening in the cell that contributes to resistance to the therapy essentially what we would like is to understand what pathways are involved and in order to identify the pathways we would essentially want to go one level deeper and identify the genes which are involved in pathways that causes the resistance to the drug now to study the changes in a cell in response to therapy there are various levels one can study the system level response uh, at the genomics level at the transcriptomics level or at the proteomics level Now, talking about the transcriptomic response, there are various methods used to quantify the transcriptomic response in a cell, and these are qRT-PCR, microarray, and RNA-seq. So basically, they measure the gene expression in a cell, and what we get is a gene expression matrix. Now, using this gene expression matrix, we can employ various computational methods to understand or identify uh, biomarkers or candidate genes or a list of genes that could give us an idea on what uh, pathways must be involved uh, that must be contributing resistance to the cell. Methods like differential gene expression analysis and functional enrichment analysis cannot reveal connections between the genes. They only give us an idea on what are the genes that are expressed or um, are enriched in one con uh, in one group of cells or in one condition versus the other. But there is no information among how uh, these genes are uh, connected amongst each other. And hence, co-expression network analysis is a method that gives us more information on how genes are correlating to each other. and that can give us an idea on what genes must be functionally related so the basic idea behind weighted gene coexpression network analysis is that genes with similar expression patterns are functionally associated so let us break that down when i say genes with similar expression patterns i mean um genes that are correlated what does um that mean what does uh, to what does it mean to have, to be like two genes for two genes to be correlated so when the expression of one gene goes up the expression of the other gene goes up as well when the expression of one gene goes down the expression of the other gene goes down as well that that means that they have similar expression patterns and now coming to the second part uh, of it they are functionally associated so when these genes have similar expression patterns it means that they are functionally associated meaning that they are part of the same complex or they are involved in the same pathway or regulatory mechanism or they may influence each other or may be influenced by the same underlying mechanism and this will be more clear when i give you an example in the next slide so quick recap um we have all studied central dogma at some point in our life and we have been taught that dna is transcribed into rna and rna gets translated into protein so here is a gene regulatory network and here gene 1 gets uh, transcribed into mrna1 and mrna1 is translated into protein 1 now protein 1 is required for gene 2 to be transcribed so it basically binds to the promoter region to gene 2 and transcribes gene 2 to mrna2 which is translated into protein 2 Now protein one and protein two are required to transcribe gene three, so it basically binds to the both of these proteins bind to the promoter region of gene three, which is transcribed into mRNA three and protein three. 
so high uh, expression of gene one meaning more mrna one transcript which means more protein one in the environment and more protein one which means that it will result in more um, uh, mrna two being transcribed from gene two which means a higher expression of gene two which will result in more protein two in the environment and since we have high protein one and protein two in the environment this will result into more uh, number of mrna3 being transcribed from gene 3 which means higher expression for gene 3 which will ultimately result in the high protein 3 in the environment so gene 1 gene 2 and gene 3 have coordinated um, expression meaning that if the expression of gene 1 goes up the expression of gene 2 and gene 3 also goes up if the expression of gene 1 goes down it will also result in lower expression in gene 2 and gene 3 so similar gene expression patterns between these three genes indicate that they are functionally associated. And here we can see that they are involved in a gene regulatory network where gene 1 regulates the expression of gene 2 and gene 1 and gene 2 regulates the expression of gene 3. So genes that are functionally related or genes in the same metabolic pathway are generally co-expressed. So here is an example of a cholesterol biosynthesis pathway and uh, if you look at the genes that are highlighted in yellow, these are all the genes that are co-expressed to gene uh, DHCR7. So if you look at the other genes, you will find that these are the genes that are coding for enzymes that are part of cholesterol biosynthesis pathway. So this gives you an idea that genes that are co-expressed uh, co uh, are often related functionally or they are part of the same uh, regulatory pathways or uh, metabolic pathways. Now that we understood how genes with similar expression patterns are functionally associated, let us talk about the terminologies before we go on to uh, talking about various steps in um, weighted gene co-expression network analysis. So basically this is a co-expression network and each node here denotes a gene. So genes are denoted in this network as nodes and they are connected to each other by edges which are basically uh, how they are correlating to uh, that particular node or that particular gene and when we have genes with very similar expression profiles they basically form um, a network which is highly connected which is called modules and genes that are highly connected to other genes in a module is called hub hub gene and lastly, module ligand gene is a representative gene expression profile uh, in a module. Um, there are also other terminologies and concepts that I'm not uh, covering in this video because I want to keep this video um, simplified and high level. Um, so there are various mathematical steps uh, that goes into this approach, which I will not be covering in this video, but I intend to cover it in the next video. So omitting certain concepts and certain terminologies on purpose to keep this video simplified and uh, high level. Now taking a look at various steps that go in weighted gene co-expression uh, network analysis. So this approach can be applied to microarray or RNA-seq data. Both of these methods are used to measure gene expression. So essentially what we have is a gene expression matrix where we have rows as genes or probides and columns as samples. And the values could be the intensity values if it's coming from the microarray data or quantifications from if it's coming from the RNA-seq data. And essentially the goal is to find genes that are co-expressed and as we previously discussed co-expressed genes are functionally related so finding co-expressed genes can give us more information or clues on underlying mechanisms and pathways that can be used to study the response to external stimulus so um, we can use this gene expression matrix essentially to perform uh, correlations between genes and gene correlations can be performed between all the genes so essentially we end up with a matrix with correlation values um, and correlations between all the genes and this matrix can ultimately be used and additional steps are performed on this matrix and ultimately this algorithm uses a clustering approach to um, cluster these genes uh, and essentially what we can do is identify modules of co-expressed genes. Basically these are nothing but there are a lot of clusters and we can extract certain clusters. So basically we can extract certain um, clusters of genes that are co-expressed. And once you have identified and extracted these clusters and we call these clusters as modules, uh, one can also uh, use perform like further um, analysis using these clusters so basically one can correlate similar clusters or modules one can also uh, identify regulatory networks uh, using the genes that are part of that uh, cluster and one can also perform enrichment analysis 
and using these modules uh, one can also correlate these modules to external traits or phenotypes and can also identify driver genes or genes that are highly connected to the other genes in that cluster or module. So talking about some of the good practices uh, while performing this analysis, so uh, it is recommended that this analysis should be performed with more number of samples, at least 20, as more samples ensures robust and refined results. Uh, weighted gene co-expression network analysis is designed to be an unsupervised analysis method that clusters genes based on their expression profiles. So filtering genes by differential expression um, will violate a major assumption and hence one should not filter the genes by differential expression. When using this analysis for RNA-seq data, one should ensure that uh, all the genes that have consistently low counts uh, are removed. Uh, also, the data that is provided should be normalized data. Any normalization method can be used, um, that, like weight and stabilizing transformation or log transforming the RPKM, FPKM values, as far as all the samples are normalized uh, using the same method. And lastly, if there are any batch effects present in the data, then they should have to be adjusted for before running this analysis. So that's all I had for today's video. Um, in the following videos, I hope to go into more details of the mathematical steps uh, that go into weighted gene co-expression network analysis and also uh, demonstrate how to perform this analysis. So if you like today's video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.